Campillo. A couple of very important numbers here. Gabriel Campillo stands, he fights very tall, and he has the edge in height and reach. For him to be effective against what is terrific pressure from Tavares Cloud, he's going to have to use both that height and reach and pot shot from the outside. And the unified rules for tonight's fight. It's familiar to most uh, folks, no standing eight, no three knockdown rule in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. Uh, the uh, referee fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any uh, round in this fight. And the fight will become official after four rounds if there's a clash of heads and uh, they have to stop the fight. Uh, and then they would go to the scorecards after four rounds. So we're ready for our first bout of the evening, the IBF Light Heavyweight Championship on the line. So let's go to the ring for the formal introductions from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the American Bank Center here in Corpus Christi, Texas. As we have a big night of action coming your way and it's all brought to you by Goose and Tudor Promotions in association with Corona and Showtime. This world championship attraction is also presented in conjunction with Don King Productions and Samson Boxing and is sanctioned by the IBF President Daryl Peoples, Supervisor in Attendance David McCullough, along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Introducing to you our three judges scoring from ringside. From Texas, Joel Elizondo. From Minnesota, Denny Nelson. And from Texas, David Robertson. Our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Mark Nelson. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with yellow trim, hailing from Madrid, Spain. He weighed in at a ready 173 and one half pounds. His record stands at 21 wins, three losses, and one draw, with seven wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the IBF number three contender. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Gabriel Chico Guapo Campillo. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner, the defending world champion wearing tiger stripe trunks. Hailing from Tallahassee, Florida, he weighed in at the light heavyweight limit of 175 pounds even. He is undefeated in his campaign with a record of 23 wins, no losses, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making the fourth defense of his title, please welcome the defending and defeated IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Tavoris Thundercloud. And now introducing our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Mark Nelson. Back up. Gabriel Tavares, you've had your instructions in the dressing room. You know exactly what I expect for the IBF light heavyweight title. Give me a good, hard, clean fight and protect yourself at all times. Obey the bell. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. All right, we are ready. 12 rounds in the light heavyweight division for the IBF world title. And the challenger from Madrid, Spain, Gabriel Campillo. He said that Cloud is a very strong fighter, but doesn't have much technique, and he's not that fast. I will use fast movement and intelligence. Meanwhile, for the champion, defending his title for the fourth time, every fight I'm trying to get more fans and reach more people, he won't be able to hit me with a handful of rice. <laughs> That sounds like an Antonio Tarverism, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Round number one. Cloud, normally a very fast starter.
One of the things to look for early, and already we see it, Campillo cannot stand right in front of Tavares Cloud. So already we see the circling motion that he's giving, uh, and he's going to have to use that and use the angles during this fight. And also you see him circling to the opposite way of what a normal southpaw, yes. a natural southpaw would normally circle. You're right. I do that sometimes. Yeah. And what he's trying to do is set up a counter left hand over uh, Cloud's right hand. It's a great point. Cloud has fought lefties twice early in his career. He went the distance with Reggie Strickland four rounds in 2005, and he TKO Joey Hill in three. And that was a long time ago, and, and those were very novice left-handers. So we'll see how he handles a world-class lefty. Campillo, nine-year pro, ranked number three in the IBF at 175 pounds. He's two and one in world championship fights. And an interesting road, Al, for Campillo to get here to Corpus Christi. Oh, yeah. He's had, you know, he was a former champion. He's had two very questionable, uh, he's coming off two questionable decisions. A loss to Beboot uh, Shumanov, who uh, won back the title that he won, and then a draw to Carol Marat in a title eliminator. Both fights, he could easily have gotten a decision win. But he is a former champion. If he chewed oh, oh, my oh, my and dropped him. He set him up, and he dropped him with a straight right in the first round. And that's the type of power that I was speaking about earlier that has these other light heavyweights kind of nervous about seeing Tavares Cloud. Cloud closing in with a minute and six remaining. Can Peel, can he hold on? Can Peel, they stop it. Oh. They stop it. They're calling a knockdown. Oh, they're going to call it a knockdown. Because he hit the ropes. Six, seven, eight. Ready? Yeah. Come here. Walk to me. Two knockdowns in the first round. 43 seconds left. Campillo in major trouble as the cloud closes in. The champion. He wanted to win an impressive style. If he could finish him in the first round, he would accomplish his goal. Campillo's going to have to punch to keep Cloud off him, not just move. Cloud patient. 18 seconds. And what Campillo is not doing is keeping his range. He has the height and the reach Ten advantage. Seconds. But you see Cloud Obey getting in belt, close. Guys. It's going to be a long night Obey if he continues here. to do that. Or a short one. <laughs> wow. Time. What a first right round in Corpus Christi. Tavoris Cloud, when we talked to him yesterday, guys, he was an angry man, and you see what he can do when he focuses. Well, he came out with a rage in this fight, and you know, we the left hook is what he is more known for, but there's the straight right hand. Campillo had put himself in range for that punch by circling to his left, which Antonio says he is he truthfully is sometimes a good move, but you don't expect this from Tavares Cloud. He's more of a left hooker. Well, he has power in both yeah. hands. I mean, uh, he's just a devastating puncher. And he's getting too close. If Capillo is going to stay in this fight, he's going to have to use that jab and set the range. Now, here's where Mark Nelson called this a knockdown because he hit the ropes. Well, the rope saved him from the knockdown. Exactly, Maybe that's and that's it. why he called it a knockdown. Yeah. It looked as if Nelson was ready to not only it step did. in and call yeah. it a knockdown, but step in and stop the fight. Second round, scheduled for 12 in the light heavyweight division. The IBF world title on the line. The champion in the Tiger Trunks, Tavores Cloud, the challenger in the red and gold, Gabriel okay. Campillo. And you talk about it, get, digging a hole. That was a 10-7 round for Tavores Cloud. Oh, my, another right hand hurts Campillo. Campillo is not landing against Cloud as I thought he might. Cloud's defense, excellent so far. It is, and he's allowing Cloud yeah. to counter everything yeah. that he throws because he's throwing it and he's leaving it out there. He's not snapping that jab. Yeah. Neither is he snapping that straight left hand. You're right. So he's going to have to make some changes. And quick. <laughs> We'd like to introduce the fourth member of our team, Chuck Chiampa. Chuck, your thoughts on what's taking place so far? Well, Cloud has taken over completely. The reason he he uh, called that a knockdown was, as you said earlier, the ropes held him up. He was not on the ropes. He would have gone down. It was a 10-7. He won the round, and two knockdowns would be a 10-7. And thank you very much. A minute and 50 remaining.
in the second round scheduled for 12. Tavores Cloud very patient in the ring. Cloud coming off an eighth round TKO win against Yusuf Mack in June. But he hasn't been a consistent fighter. He fought only six times in the last four years. Only one time in 11, two times in 10, one time in 09, and twice in 2008. Now, what, what's happened here in this round? I, all of a sudden, Cloud is going backwards and Campillo's punching a lot. It's as if he just decided to see how it would be Cloud. It's interesting. And there's where Campillo's raking him over the coals. Well, you know what? It, it, that's the knock on Cloud. Sometimes he yeah. gets uh, comfortable oh. instead of finishing the job. You leave a guy around and a guy gets confident. You know, that's the, all experience. And right that, now, he's taking some hard shots. That's the Campillo we saw on tape. That's the Campillo that we thought was a tough guy for Cloud. All right, let's take a look at the show stat power punches early on. And you see that Cloud, of course, he he's outlanded Campillo in power punches, but Campillo started to, to uh, you know, narrow the margin now in this round, and, and Campillo's winning this round. Now, granted, he, he's down three points in this fight going into this round, but he, is, uh, he has made a statement here in round two. And you wonder, Antonio, for a fighter like Tavores Cloud, after he's felt Campillo's power, you see it starting the second round, he was moving backwards, and usually fighters that go forward, they don't know how to go backwards, especially if they get in trouble. Could that be an experimental situation for him? No, no, you see, he's, he's, uh, he's composed. I mean, he's not, he's doing a lot of things in there, but those punches are landing, they're landing Chris, and he's doing a lot of things, but right now he just needs to continue to put the pressure on. So let's go into the blue corner, the corner of Gabriel Campillo, and listen to our translator, Felix De Jesus. That was the round that we were looking for. You got to keep working the body inside and try to lift him up. You're going to win if you keep uh, working the body. But you got to keep lifting up, try lifting up when you go inside with the body. You see, he doesn't have anything else. That's what you need to work with. Campillo with this combination punching. This is what makes him a special fighter when he does this. And Tavares Cloud sometimes gets frozen when you throw those combinations. Now it's going to be up to Tavares Cloud to raise the intensity in this fight. He got to go to another level. Come on. Third round for the IBF world title in the light heavyweight division. Tavores Cloud, the champion, and Tiger Trunks, Gabriel Campillo, the challenger from Madrid, Spain, 21-3-1 record with seven KOs. Campillo in the gold and red. And Campillo very strong in that second round. Tweet. <laughs> there you go, fan friendly fire free, zones. The folks tweeting in on uh, okay. our um, on Twitter. They love Gus. They love Tavares Cloud. How come we didn't get any love from them? What's going on here? Well, Al, you got love from the International Boxing Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, here comes Tavares Cloud trying to trying to get something more than love. Of course, the fans responding on Twitter during the course of this fight, and that's a great interactive oh. thing. Look at those combinations. Another nice right uppercut from Campillo. He landed one in the second round as well. When you're southpaw, Antonio, and you're fighting a guy that's a straight-ahead fighter like a divorce cloud, what's in your mind? What do you want to do? Right now, you want to just give him little angles right there and move. Give him, Make him turn into your power. Right now, it's the Matador versus the Bull, and Campillo is doing a good job being the Matador right now. He's walking to Vars Cloud into some of these shots. And make no mistake, Campillo is sometimes he's a little bit of an arm puncher, but he still has authority on those punches. He's not a one-punch knockout artist, but those are, are solid punches. An accumulation punch of punches can really get a guy out of there. He's going to the body and to the head right now. Oh, wow. This fight had the earmarks of one that was going to be very good, and I'll tell you, it's shaping up that way. A huge start by Cloud, but now look at Campillo doing what we knew he was capable of doing if he could withstand the power of Cloud.
Campillo, his father worked in a chemical and metal factory growing up. He passed away eight years ago. Didn't start fighting until he was 20. Had 25 amateur fights, finished with a 24 and one record. And he was the Spanish national champion. Now, the, you know, he, as a sparring partner, Campillo had Yusef Matt, who, of course, is the man who just lost to Tavoris Cloud, and he was exclusively his sparring partner. Campillo is landing some very solid shots, and it looked like Tavoris Cloud's legs buckled a little bit there with one of those uppercuts that he didn't see. Third round coming to an end as Tavoris Cloud takes a seat on the stool. And Al, what are the keys for Tavoris, the champion, this evening? Well, to jab with conviction, I think the double left took's an important weapon, even though he landed the right hand to hurt him. And we haven't seen that hook to the body and the head as much. And here's the third one. This is the most important one. To keep those hands up as he's attacking, because we see the combination punching of Campillo. And let's take a look at how Campillo is able to exploit the defensive problems. There's the, the straight left hand, but he doesn't stop with that. To land an uppercut from that far back is actually amazing. And then he, he makes a miss. And you made the point, Antonio, that the body work of Campillo is also impressive. Campillo is doing a lot of good work right now. He has Tavares Cloud thinking about defense. This guy is hitting me now. I just can't walk in any kind of way. IBF world title on the line. 12 rounds here in the light heavyweight division. The challenger, Gabriel Campillo from Madrid, Spain in the gold and red. And he's really been coming on after being knocked down twice in the first round. According to my scorecard, he has won the next two rounds. As we go into the fourth, the champion, Devorah's Cloud in the Tiger Trunks looks like he's having some problems pulling the trigger over the last couple of rounds. Well, right now he's getting a little bit closer, but the difference is he hadn't landed anything significant in a while. Campillo right now is in his groove. He's feeling like he's confident enough to make him miss and make him pay. He's right there, but he's not getting hit with those big bombs. All right, let's take a look at the power punches landed in the last round. Cloud, one of 16, Campillo, 14 of 41. That's staggering given the fact that Cloud had such a huge uh, first round. Now, Campillo has slowed his pace a little bit in terms of numbers of punches in this round, but still, as Antonio pointed out, Cloud's had a hard time landing the big punch. And in watching Tavor's Cloud fight, you rarely see him go backwards this much. No, that's actually puzzling. He almost started to do it in round two on his own. But, and uh, of course, Campillo's taking advantage of that by, you know, Cloud became the boxer and Campillo became the attacker. It don't seem like That's Cloud has an answer when punch. Campillo is going forward at him. He stands there with his hands locked in and Campillo is able to get those shots off. He needs to be breaking, moving, and rolling up under the taller guy. Now there's that double left hook by Cloud and look what it opened up for him. Cloud moving in, straight right hand to the chest, Campillo stepping off. That's the difference right there. Again, Cloud was in position, but he was not able to land those big shots. Campillo came back with some combination punches. This is an interesting round. Both men have done good work in this round. It'll be interesting to see how the judges look at this round. And I think Cloud has done one thing very well in this round. He started to rip the body with those hooks and bring it to the head. But Campillo comes with those great counter punches. And it looks like there's some blood coming from the left eye of Cloud. Hands free. Hands free. Campillo telling us movement, intelligence, the key for him against Devorah's Cloud. As Gabriel Campillo. Chico Guapo, handsome man is his nickname. Nelson, 
sits on the stool, and what are the keys? Well, the, we talked about uh, Campillo using yeah. angles. Uh, uh, just a little bit of lateral movement is enough. You can freeze Cloud with combination punching, and he's an excellent combination puncher, Campillo. We've seen evidence of that. No arm punches. He is getting more, I think, more behind the punches, Campillo, than he sometimes does. So he's uh, starting to fulfill those keys. And there's a cut. Referee says that it Listen, came from a punch, body. not a headbutt. Yeah. Remember how you pull his hand down? Pull his hand down. Deep breath. Don't pan. This is your fight. Corners out. So corners out. You dog, man. You dog, man. Out of here, guys. The fifth round scheduled for 12 for the IBF world title in the light heavyweight division. Tavores Cloud, the champion. After round one, he has not looked himself taking on the challenger, Gabriel Campillo from Madrid, Spain. Let's bring in Chuck Jampa. Chuck. Yes, after four rounds, Campillo really has taken over the fight from the second round on. The key to scoring is effective aggression, and he is doing just that, hitting uh, Cloud from angles, and when he gets hit, he comes back with two and three combinations. I got it even after four rounds. And there was the combination punching again that uh, Chuck just talked about. And you know, one of the things that Antonio mentioned earlier that shouldn't go unnoticed, that while Cloud has done good work to the body, Campillo has also gone downstairs a lot which could slow Cloud down a little bit. And the Campillo guys said they think Cloud fades after five rounds. I don't know that that's the case, but if they are right about that, then he's definitely going to be in a good position. Now, what's very interesting is that Cloud was originally scheduled to fight a right-hander, but that yes. fight fell through three weeks before it was supposed to happen. Yes, and, and it got switched to lefty, and as we pointed out, he's only faced a couple of lefties early in his career, uh, Cloud. And I think this fight is tougher than Zolt or Day would have been. I felt it when they made it, and it certainly looks like it now. Work out. Hands yeah, coming on, into guys. this fight, Al, you thought that this would be a very, very him. hard, tough fight for Cloud. I didn't see it on paper, but now I'm seeing what you were what you were talking about, it this guy. It didn't look like it in round <laughs> one, but... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I just think he's he's a very good combination puncher. And let's let's remind everybody, you know, he Cloud hurt him badly in round one. He could hurt him at any time in this fight and completely turn this around. Short left hook landing for Tavores Cloud. Now in that posture, I think Cloud Don't needs punch. to rip those you. shots to the body when he gets them close to the the ropes and keep them against the ropes. He's allowing, I think he's allowing Campillo to get off the ropes too easy, and there's that combination punching again. I don't think this is a fight that Tavares Cloud can gamble with that one punch, changing it around in his favor. He's gonna have to start digging tough and winning some of these rounds. I agree with you, Antonio. You can't wait for that Hail Mary pass. Coming to the end of the fifth round. Uppercut landing for Campillo. Cloud oh. with the cowering left hook. And a big smile as he heads back to the corner. Inside NASCAR returns to showtime on Wednesday, February 29th at 9 with a one hour Daytona 500 special edition. The Cloud family watching out of Tallahassee, Florida. His beautiful wife to the right, his mom to the left. Just talking to them yesterday. They Big came breath. into our meeting. Very, very interesting family story. Mother having to raise Johnson divorce the floor, by herself. He met his wife while his wife was considering competing in boxing. And he met her at the gym. She said that when her husband goes into the ring, he is not her husband anymore. He's an animal, he's a beast, and she gets a chance to see him when he finally comes home and has tea parties and plays Barbie with his daughter. 
And a quick note of condolences to Chris Myers, of course, our uh, colleague on Inside NASCAR, a very fine sportscaster, just clean man I've known for years. His son, his 19-year-old son, uh, passed away in a car accident, and we offer him and his family our sincere condolences. Sixth round, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Light Heavyweight 